So let's fine tune a stable diffusion model. First of all, why would you even want to do such a thing? Well, stable diffusion, the, the models created for it know about certain famous people, but they probably don't know about you. They, they don't know about me. So I might want to render myself, say, as a Star Trek character, like I did here. And the way that I do this is I take a bunch of pictures of myself in different poses, and I fine-tune the model on this, and then I create some word that's not already in Stable Diffusion's vocabulary that describes me, like my initials, JTH, or something such as that. So to do this, you have a couple of options. You can use it completely in the cloud using Diffusion Hub, which is a commercial service. We'll see more on that when we get into our final project. I'll definitely release some more videos on Diffusion Hub. Fine tuning with, uh, with Dream Booth though, is what we're going to use here. This is a collab notebook that I believe Google actually created. I link to it because this tends to change as, as stuff gets broke and new things happen. I'm going to do runtime, change runtime type. I am, since we're training, I am going to go up to an A100. Now, you probably don't have that available on the free version, so you may or may not be that successful with running this in Colab for the course. That's where we'll use Diffusion Hub. But for now, let's see how to do it in Colab. I am going to run this. This will install Dream Booth on this machine. Now we're not going to be running automatic 11.11 like you would do on Diffusion Hub. You will need your Hugging Face token here. And to get a Hugging Face token, you will, you'll, you'll need to go to Hugging Face and obtain that. It is, it does not cost anything, but they do want to know who you are. Okay, I ran that, but I removed my key so that you don't see it. We're going to extend the base model, but you may want to choose a more advanced one. I would probably get better luck running realistic, especially if I were trying to create realistic images of myself. But we're going to just go ahead and run this part. This will download and set up, and then we're ready to start training. What you need to do here is I'm going to do photo of... I can train it for ZWX, that's what the author set it up, but we're going to make it be a person. Person. But ZWX person is what you'll use to, to make use of, uh, of this once you've got it rendered and you want to actually make use of it in Stable Diffusion. So we can go ahead and run this. We need our images. We're going to upload them. You just choose the files. There is me. And we'll upload all of those. Okay, and then we're going to actually begin the training. Some of the parameters you may want to adjust here is 800 is the number of steps that we're going to do. Uh, you can specify to save at a certain interval. You don't, this tends to be a really a pretty good baseline for it. You want you really do not want to train forever and ever. That'll tend to overfit and you won't be able to vary the image all that much. So here it is getting set up, preparing to fine tune our model. And now we're training. Okay, you can see it's zipping along here. We do have a pretty good GPU on it. So we'll just fast forward through this. All right, it's done training. It's generated some samples for us to look at. We'll use the default weights directory. And there is, is me. I must have left part of the dog prompt in there. Um, but, so automatic 1111. This basically will convert the weights. And this is good to do. This way you can run inference on it. Oh, the sample prompt. That's that's where I left photo of ZWX dog in there. So doesn't really hurt for the train model. The train model is fine, but make sure you remember to change that location too. I would do a control search. So I guess that's me as a dog. Ah, not bad. Kind of kind of fierce. So there you can see the checkpoint was saved at content stable diffusion weights model.ckpt. That's a very important file. 
you would want to download that or copy that to Google Drive. And then you can use inference on it and basically see what the model that you produced looks like. Notice we're using the diffusion pipeline that we used in the previous section. We'll just use that seed, that's fine. Photo of, oops, photo of person in bucket. And it's generating some images of me in a bucket. That'll be interesting. Not really so much me in a bucket. Oh, there's me in a bucket. So you can you can see it is it is starting to put me in into different things for there as a cartoon. There we go. I mean that that's decent of me as a cartoon. Let's see what the others look like in a second. Yeah, I can I can see it. I look a little ominous there. I could deal with that. You definitely want to work on some prompt engineering. Like I see I'm missing a hand there or I've stabbed my hand into my chest. That looks flipping painful. And that's it. That's how you fine tune a model. Thank you for watching this video and give it a like if this was useful to you and subscribe to see the rest of the course.